sometimes people won't accept you for you. So then you have to hide away. And that is, you know, tragic and so sad. It's Maria. I know we just did a little book tips and tricks on Dune. So check that out. I'll put a card right here for you if you're interested in that. Today we're going to do another music reaction. You guys seem to like that. So I actually got a comment from Rihanna Spears and she has suggested this band. Let me make sure I have it up. Aesthetic Perfection. And so I was like, yeah, let's listen to that. And so I haven't listened to the song that she has recommended for me yet. Um, but it's the band Aesthetic Perfection, and they are listed genre rise. So this is completely out of my genre for music. And their genre is synth pop, EBM, and agrotech. Apple Music calls them just alternative. So I take that as you will. Um, like I said, I have never heard of this band before. I mean, to be completely honest with y'all, I spent my life listening to country music as a kid, like old country music, and then pop as an adult with some rap. Um, so honestly, I'm not really well versed in music. I recently got into rock and metal because of my husband. And when I say I got into it, I mean, I listen to it because he listens to it. Um, but yeah, so let's listen to this. I want to do a caveat. Um, I really enjoy lyrics, right? And so this isn't just like a reaction. I saw someone had said like this, like at my last music reaction video was like an extremely long commentary. It is. This will probably be the same. Um, it's like a comment on like the lyrics and what is being said in the song and how it makes you feel because that's what is really important to me and resonates with me when I listen to music. So if you don't like that, that's fine. Um, but just so you're prepared, that's what it's going to be. Okay, so here we go. Aesthetic perfection, a bark at the moon. It's a single. Here we go. So I real I I kind of I like it I dig it. Don't come for me. It kind of reminds me of um. I grew up in the early two thousands, like in high school, and I feel like this kind of sound was kind of coming up at that point. So it kind of gives me nostalgic feelings. But I spent my whole life trying to be someone. Yes, I spent my whole life trying to seize your love. So I mean, is this a love story? Are we gonna get into a love story, a sad love story? <laughs> I always like when it's like that, uh, like, I bad and I bled, you know what I mean? It, uh, It's really, I don't know, reminds me of that 2005. So he said, he rants and he raves like a rat in a cage. And a rat in a cage, right, is something that um, wants to get out. They want to be free, but he's stuck. And he wonders if he's ever getting out, so he bites. So I bite and I bleed. I wonder if that's reference to the rat, right? Because um, trying to get out, you're, you're and it's animalistic, right? You're going to try and get free no matter what. Like, animals will chew off their legs to get out, to get free. Um, he says, so I bite and I bleed and I'm burying my teeth. No, I can't stop now. Um, so he spent his whole life trying to be someone and seize your love. Is that a parent maybe? I mean, that could be a parent, like wanting validation. Okay. <laughs> So he's barking at the moon, letting his demons out and letting his the real him out, right? So there's a lot of, um, it's like a lot of metaphors regarding um, just animals, right? So he's a rat in a cage, he's baring his teeth, and now he's barking at the moon, reminiscent of um, uh, a wolf, maybe a werewolf, um, and letting the real him out. And so he's letting his demons out, right? So it's like... Um, he's letting all maybe his like pain out as he's barking at the moon it's the real him so i think sometimes we hold that stuff inside right where we don't tell people what our demons are or what our trauma is or what our tragedy is um 
and we hold that inside. And so here he's actually letting that out. It's like cathartic for him. Um, and the moon has a lot of connotations, right? When we think of the moon, um, some people think of peaceful healing. Um, and so maybe that inner place, the moon, um, and being able to heal yourself, but also the moon and demons, right? Full moon usually means something bad's happening. The witches are out. Things are not, a, it's not a good time to be out and about. So I'm interested to see which way he's going to go with this. I like that in his verses, right, in the first verse, he repeated, I've spent my whole life, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I've spent my whole life. And now he's done the same thing here. I've waited for so long um, to finally free myself. Yes, I've waited so long to feel the release from hell. Um, I like the way that he has paired that um, in the writing style. I feel like it makes it an easier um, to listen to, to get stuck in your head, right, as a bop. And then to just... Uh, it's a good um, technique, I think, in poetry so that you can really focus in on those specific um, aspects. So he's waited so long to finally free himself. He's waited so long to feel the release from hell. like at the end he really has like this kind of like a growly raspy sound like he's really pushing with his vocals so I feel like it's a really important piece so he said um right so he's been waiting for so long to finally free himself to feel the release from hell um so it's the setting sun and the change has begun so I think as we're talking about barking at the moon right and letting his demons out we kind of talked about maybe being a werewolfy or an allusion to a werewolf and I think that has solidified here. The change has become with the setting of the sun. Um, in the darkness, I die to come out. No, I'm not on the run. I can't wait to be done within the lies I tell. So I think like this change, obviously in this sense, it's like a metaphor for whatever he's going through, the specific change he has inside of himself, but he's likening that to like maybe a, a animalistic change, like a werewolf. And in the darkness, he dies to come out. So maybe in the darkness, it's the only way he can, you know, he feels safe because no one can see him. So he can be his true self, whatever that is. Um, it could be anything, right? I wonder if he's felt people devalue him or not validate his existence and maybe some of this is you know some of that pain from that um because we live in a society that can be so trashy sometimes and so rude to people who they don't think fit into their little box but i'm glad here he says and the change has begun in the darkness i died to come out no i'm not on the run i can't wait to be done with the lies that i tell so what it, what is he going to do what is it that he's going to do to make it so he can be done with these lies. So that's exactly what we said earlier, right? When the lights go out, disguises down, and so he'll bark at the moon. Oh. I mean, oh. I think. I think, though, it's easier to be ourselves in the dark when no one can see us, right? But it's so sad that he feels that it's the only time he can let his true authentic self out and he doesn't have to hide behind this disguise. When I howl, I feel so fearsome, so free to be me. I mean, yeah, I feel like we kind of lose that as we get older, right? That ability to just be unequivocally ourselves, um, to just want, run screaming down the street, being just you as a child, um, screaming ferociously at whatever it is. You're just you. And we 
learned very young for some of us, some of us a little later, that you can't do that. Sometimes people won't accept you for you. So then you have to hide away. And that is, you know, tragic and so sad because we lose so much of what makes our, what can make our society so amazing when we make people feel like who they are is not good enough and that they need to change because we're losing out on so many different perspectives whether that's culturally whether that's um just anything really it's and as kids i feel like you know growing up that can be tough um, especially if you have a family that doesn't accept you or just other kids in school high school can be rough middle school can be rough kids are brutally honest right um and so how we teach them is how they re they interact with other kids so um i'm sad that he feels that way or that whoever the narrator is feels that way you'll never cage me again so he's getting out guys did you hear that you'll never cage me again that was so um i don't say it's creepy but it was definitely like it had some I felt like animosity behind it and good for him they'll never cage you again So he's running, he's running away. So, I mean, I guess he got out of that cage. Whoever put him in this cage, I guess he said, peace out. He saw his opportunity. He got out, he bared his teeth. And now he, he learned how to get that bite in him to get out, right? So looking back at the lyrics here. So I bite and I, like a rat in a cage and I wonder, am I getting out? So I bite and I bleed and I'm baring my teeth. No, I can't stop now. So there, I think is how he, he was getting out of the cage, right? That's what it is. I mean, he he bit and there's blood and he's like getting out and he feels empowered by shedding that that cage that he was in. Now he's out barking at the moon, letting people know how he really feels. And then, you know, he's finally freed himself from that. Um, and he felt that change come over him, that change to be that fearsome warrior of himself. And so now he's running away from these people who have caused him so much damage or person or society or whoever it is um and you know what don't knock running away sometimes sometimes you gotta you gotta leave right and so many people are like oh you need to stay and fight look if it's toxic for you let it go let it go and let live you want to run away and start your life somewhere else do it if it's good for you bark at the moon and run away sometimes you do have to fight don't get me wrong there's a country song. If you if you don't stand for anything, you fall for everything. So sometimes you do have you do have to stand up for yourself, but not always. Sometimes the bravest thing you can do is run. I know it's a Taylor Swift quote. I'm so sorry. I've been listening to her. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's the wrong genre. So that is it y'all that was bark at the moon by aesthetic perfection and i really enjoyed it i appreciate the recommendation honestly i would have never um i would have never even found this band without you um it does have like that nostalgic alternative feeling um from bands of like 2010 11 like i was saying especially the way that he enunciates words or that they enunciate words and um I really enjoyed it. So thank you for that. If you have any cool songs or music that you want me to listen to, go ahead and drop it below. Um, my husband and I are gonna do a switch. I think he's got a nine foot, 12 foot ninja song he wants me to listen to that we're gonna react to. Um, and then I'll pick a song out for him, for him to react to. Maybe something from Red, from Taylor Swift, just because I think it's so completely opposite of what he has me listening to. Um, but yeah, I will see you uh, soon. I think I have another book review coming out and then we'll have more musical reactions and reviews. So I will talk to you soon. Bye everyone.